Hi, I'm Larry. Welcome back to my studio and to our project. This is Curious Geese. Uh, if you're interested in, in doing this, you'll find uh, the reference photo and a drawing on my blog spot. And you can go back through and, and find the, the other videos to this on, on YouTube. Uh, today, we've got all of the background in and so now we're going to start finishing this up. So I've, I've kind of focused in here on my my birds and this is where we start cleaning up the edges, start doing some some final highlights and shadows. Um, this is this is the fun stuff everybody wants to get to but it's the part that has to wait until the end. All of this is underpainting. Okay, I want to want to emphasize that. Because everybody just kind of wants to get to the, the detail work and you need this underpainting. Now I have my, my photograph right here and I, I just have it right there where I can look at it at all times. This is just a black. I'm going to start up here on the, on the beak or the bill here. Because it's, it's black right underneath. Now pastel is probably the the only medium that I use black because it's it's it one it doesn't really um, gray the the colors as much as as they do in in like acrylics or watercolor which I also have videos for but it's really hard the, the like I've said before the mantra in pastel is you never have the right color and I have not yet found dark enough colors to give me something that will resemble the black so I can use the black with other colors. I can throw, I'll probably throw like in the, in the shadows under his, under his chin here. This is just a dark purple. Throw a little bit of that in there. Kind of blend it out. Now I'm just going to show you how I do this and at some point I will I will break and, and work on things and then come back but I'll show you what I'm I'm doing in those times because otherwise it may take me an hour or more to to finish all of these details and I just don't want to spend all of that time on camera just gives me more to edit, but I do want to give you, um, this is a dark blue right in here. I do want to give you enough information that you can, you can work on this on your own. A lot of this will be repetitive, so I'm, I'm not going through and doing magic in the, in the meantime. Find my light gray here for the top and I'll go back and forth blending this and I'm going to take okay, this is a, a light gray and where I'm going to have the eye let me keep my head out of the way I'm just going to put that light gray in there for for now lightly blow it be careful if you're in a classroom don't don't blow a lot of of chalk dust because it can cause people with respiratory problems um, to have a reaction to it so that is just the the base for this their eye is really rather round and this is the black again and I'm just going to come in here leaving just hopefully a little bit of that lighter color I'm 
a little bit of white right up here. So now he has a little bit of light. Now I'll fix things off camera. Um, his his white cheek here. Now remember, I'd underpainted it with the with the blues and the lavenders. Well, here's where I come in and and add some of the white. The white doesn't go over all of it. And I'm looking at my my photograph. It's a little bit of a glint right there on his end of his beak bill. I think geese and, and ducks their bills. I'm gonna take my my color shaper. This is just it's just got a real flexible end. It's just a little piece of like silicone or something. And just lightly lightly blend. Go back to my black. I want to come in and clean up the edges of his neck. You know, I mean, all my blending of the background and stuff, some of that, that edges got a little bit messed up, and that's okay. That's, that's what this part is for. I'm going to come in on his back. I'm going to put just a little bit of of this lighter brown on there and and kind of blend it in. Those feathers are a little bit lighter. I want to take see if I got a softer white. This is just white. Come in here. I'm following the shape of the um, the growth of these feathers. Now you can blend or not at this point. Um, I may do just a little blend. If you're go coming into something light, make sure you've got clean fingers. Now I'll do the other bird off camera because it's basically the same. Clean up the edges here. Maybe come back. Let's see, is that the color? Yeah, this is the original color. It's kind of like a transition between the light and the, the darker areas. don't need to, to cover up all of that underpainting. If you just kind of be kind of strokey and leave it strokey at this point, then it, it looks like there's texture in those feathers. Come in. That. I want... Um, this is a, a gray. Because it gets a little bit grayer going underneath. I'm always following the, the shape of the the bird. Let's stop here in a second and and focus in on this area so that you can see what I'm going to do with the back. So I'll be right back. All right, now I'm back. And hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Now there's also another uh, study that, that you'll find in the, the vault there um, on doing detail on 
these birds. So if you're you're interested in that, um, you might want to check that out. Now, these birds have got a lot of like coloration, like the ends of their feathers have got a lighter color and then it transitions down into here where there's a little bit darker color in the light. I'm going to do some of that. I'm not going to do all of that. Uh, what I do want to do is get under here. There is some, some shadow. Let's see, is this the right color? Nope, I want, I don't want this color. Okay, they, they all kind of look alike until you start to use them. This is just my dark blue. And I'm just going to come in and again, I'm going to follow, follow the shape of the bird. You know, so it's going to kind of come around because these are kind of, they're, they're kind of flat underneath here. But then they, they come around on the sides. And I'm just going to put some of this in. Get that, that shadow. like that and and by by just kind of making marks I can kind of suggest some of the lighter lighter areas in there and then it comes back up here I'm gonna switch to my dark brown if I can find it there it is So I'll go back and forth between this dark brown and the the dark blue. Create this this darker color here. Throw a little bit more of that that blue in. Come up around. Now see I've got the this I'm working my way around here. But I, I'm, I'm going back and forth looking at this because I'm trying to get the, the shadow patterns as well as the feather patterns. And one of the things when I was doing the, the background, I accidentally messed up his tail. So I had to put his tail back in. But that's, you know, that's one thing, you know, with pastel, it's pretty forgiving. Like like acrylics, it has a, a kind of a forgiving nature. Come in there, find my dark brown, put some of that dark brown in. This is a time for reshaping things. There's a little bit of black in that tail. But I'm kind of reshaping things. Um, adding things. This, this detail work is, is um, fun. It can be a little tedious. This is just a little bit different color brown and I'm going to follow this around. See, is that really the color I want? Nope. I think I'll go back to the, the dark brown for back here. But I'm just kind of wiggling this around, creating that, that pattern that's in the feathers. It goes around the body. It, it lightens as it goes down into the, the belly of the beast here. It gets a little bit lighter, so let me find... Let's see, where's my... Is this the color I want? At least for part of it. I put these in. Some of them I may I 
I may blend a little bit. The lighter the pressure you put on your your chalk, the lighter it, it will show up because you're not putting as much chalk on. Come back here, kind of throw some of that in there. Find one more color here. See if that works. Nope, that's not dark enough. You never have the right color with pastel. Let's see, is that oh, that'll work? Because it go around. Now remember, the, these feathers go around. They're, they're not solid lines. They're kind of broken lines. Come in, you can kind of blend a little bit with your your chalk. Now I'm gonna take a um yeah, let's see. You know, this is my this is kind of a lavender blue color, and I'm gonna come in underneath here. The water's going to be reflecting up into the the chest, so I can blend and, and add a little bit of that in there. It gives it a little bit more um Um, feeling of being real because if, if you were there you would probably see the reflections of the, the water. I'm going to take this is my lighter color Let's see if that's the color I want and just kind of put some of those suggestions of feathers in. Be sure that you're going with the feather growth. Look at look at your your reference material here. Feathers get a little bit bigger as they go back. And if you need to come in with with if your fingers are small enough, you can use your fingers or come back in with a color shaper or something to to just lightly blend those. Blend these down here too a little bit. I like to kind of leave some of the the chalk mark part of it when I get to my finishing because that gives a little more detail, a little more texture. But just, just some of this light blending. These are kind of a subtle. There's just a little subtle change right there at the end of the feathers. But you have to make sure that they're going around, around the bird. And up here they get smaller and closer together. Try to film this when there's not too much outside activity and I go away so that my neighbors can play in their pool and then they go away at the same time and then when I start doing this again then they start playing again. So I'll just have to have to deal with it. Come in there. I'm going to take dark brown again. Throw some of that in there. Like I said, this is the time where you come in and clean up edges, put in your detail, look at things before you start working and know where you're going with this.
Okay, I'm gonna... Now, I want to let you know that, you know, when I work on this when I'm off camera, I probably have at least another hour, hour and a half invested in this that you don't see because it's it's not necessary for you to see every stroke I make. You just need to see the kind of the bones of this, the technique. You know, I can't be there to to hold your hand but um, you know I'm gonna take a little break kind of work on this a little bit and I'll be right back all right I think this is gonna be the last segment on this um, when you're looking at at your piece and you think it's getting close to being finished what I do is the and I've said this before, I will stand back and look at it. I usually like will turn my back to it and then when I turn around I look at it and I feel where my eyes are going. If my eyes land on something like say they landed back here, well then I have to figure out why they're landing back there when I need them to focus here. Uh, maybe maybe I've put something back here that's too distracting. You know that that's just secondary. That's just shadows where they can go and hide. But you know if they land where you want them to, that's good. Um, if, if you're if you're looking at your piece and you've got a chalk in your hand and you're doing this, looking for a place for it to land. Set, set it aside for a few days. Don't just jump right in and, and you know, figure out, well, where am I going to put this? You know, if, if, if looking for a place to land, you probably are to a point where you need to just let it, let it sit for a few days and then come back and look at it with fresh eyes. If you can't figure out what needs to be done, you're finished. You know, then you sign it and and be done with it. We always think there has to be something that that I can do. Um, you know, it can't be done yet, but it, it just does. It reaches a point where you need to just stop. Um, so right now, that's kind of where I am with this. There's a few little things I want to kind of go over with you. You know, like putting some some little highlights right around the where the the legs are kind of coming in and putting in some some highlights on some of the some of the uh, rings in the water be sure that you you blend them in you know just come in blend them in there's also some some shadows on some of these rings if you look look at that you'll see like there's a light area and then there's there's dark areas it's like wrinkles so you'll have a highlight and then there'll be a shadow close by so you can come in right at the the base just add a few little little shadows to give a little more detail to some of the 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 rings and then then lightly blend and remember that water is going to be soft so it's not going to have anything real hard to it and it'll it'll just kind of blend out into to nothingness you know look look for places where you can add stuff um, you know at, at this point uh, there's some some little grasses and stuff at the bottom here that I'm going to put in. Um, take my get a couple of greens here. This is just kind of a, a medium green, and just just kind of you can't really see it there. Just kind of pull them up out of the the water. They can be reflected back down into the water.
You don't have to do this. This is, at this point in time, you get to make the decision, where do I stop? So if you've got something coming up, there's got to be something coming down. Not quite as important. Let me find... Let's see. There's some highlights on those. Don't get too carried away with this. Um, it's just it's just stuff to kind of help put the birds in their place. You know, it's in a marsh in shallow water, so these are just little things that that stick up out of the water. You may want to take and and put a little a little twig or something that comes up. I know that there is a, a twig out here. Let me find a different different brown. Let's see, is this one gonna work? That just kind of breaks up that that um, negative space there. This is just my dark, a dark uh, kind of indigo color. Just add a little bit of of shadow to it. Same over here. This is just the place where you get to, to put in the things that, that you feel need to go in there. Little grasses that, that stop your eye from going off of the corner. Don't make them important, just, they're, they're just there, they're just stuff. There's some uh, little green things coming in here. Pull them in, kind of guide them, t you know, turn them towards the subject. And throw a little bit of like the little disturbance in the water right between the the grasses and the water. Pull down, pull across. But this is this is where you get to make the decisions. Look look at your your birds. Um, decide what you you need to do. Like I said, there's not not much left for me to do here. Kind of blend some of these out just a little bit. Soften them a little bit. Check to make sure you've put the light in the eye, that you've added the sunlight into places. Um, let's see, I think I'll come in here. This has got a little bit more dark on it because it is underneath. But I think that for me, this is this is it. This is done. So I want to thank you for watching, and I hope that uh, you will take the time and, and do this. I had a fun time doing doing this. I'm going to sign this one, and I always sign it in a corner with something. And remember to check in on your family, your friends, call them, make sure they're okay. 
you stay safe, and most of all, keep painting, and I hope to see you again in class real soon. Thank you so much for watching.